I'm Gina Gowans from Team Free Speed and I'm delighted to be working with Virgin Active on the Virgin Active London Triathlon Training Series. In this video we're going to have a look at transitions. The fourth element of triathlon is always worth practicing. It's a fantastic way to make up time without needing to be fitter or more efficient at the swim, bike or the run. Transition is all about being organised. It's not difficult, but you need to know what you're doing. The most important thing you can do in transition is keep calm. Really, don't panic. There'll be lots of people around you in transition and that can be a little bit nerve-wracking, but stay focused on what you're doing, keep looking ahead and not down at your bike or the ground. Transition areas can be huge and at the London Triathlon you can expect to see rows and rows of bikes. It's really important to know where your transition area is going to be. When you get to the venue, identify where your bike's going to be racked and where you're going to lay out your transition. Let's hand over to Steve Worthington, winner of the Windsor Triathlon, to show you how to lay out your transition area. Okay, so today I'm just going to talk you through exactly how I would set up my transition. So this would be how you know, experience, more experienced athletes or elite athletes would set up their transitions, basically looking at everything's for speed. That's all we're really interested in. It's not about comfort, it's just speed. So first of all, I come in, you notice I've already got my shoes I'm, I've already got my shoes on my pedals, I've already decided what gear I'm in and I already know that that's fine and everything's working. I've got my drink ready, so that's all sorted and I've done that before I've, before I've even come in transition so I know that that's fine and I'm sorted. So next up, what I'm going to do is actually just take my helmet off and I'm going to sort out my bike shoes. This is one thing that's very specific and takes a bit of practice but once you can do it, it's a lot quicker and it's a lot less things to worry about as well. Basically the aim is that you're going to, when you do transition, you'll jump on your bike and your shoes are going to be exactly where you want them to be. So my right foot's forward and it's going to be flat. So all I'm going to do is get an elastic band and thread it through this loop. A lot of shoes nowadays have a loop at the back or you can use the side of the strap or anything really. And I just do a little loop like that and then basically attach it to somewhere that's not a moving part so usually either a bottle cage is alright or just just the screw end of your front neck is a good place to put it. Just make sure that if it does break it's not going to drop down and jam up your gears. And again on the other side make sure your shoe's nice and wide open. So on this side I'm just going to put it through the loop again exactly the same on the other side but this side I'm going to put it on my rear stay just there so just on the skewer end. All I'm looking for is that the shoe is in exactly the, you know, as flat a position as I can get it. I've already made sure it's as open as it'll be and often I put talcum pad or something in there just so that I've got a bit more lubrication or whatever, just so my, my, I know that my foot's going to get in and even when it's wet out of the water it's not going to jam. Okay, so I'm happy that my bike is good to go, you know, I'm in the right gear, I've got my drink sword, my, my shoes are there, so right, I'm happy with that. Next up, I'm going to look at the front area of transition. So. This is basically the point at which, when I run into transition, I've come out of the swim, I've got my wetsuit here, and I want to be here when everything's organised. So sometimes use a towel, depends on the surface really, but put a towel down and you say, first thing, you've got your running shoes. Dead easy, all you need for your run really is your flats. You know, running flats, elastic laces, everything's basically designed for speed, you know. So what I do usually is just make sure my shoes are fine, there's no you know, there's no twigs, there's no anything like that stuck around and they're good to go. So I'm happy with those. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put them on the towel. Again, nice and evenly spread out. Next thing, going to think about the bike. First things first, helmet. You can't even touch a bike before you've got your helmet on. So you can balance it on there sometimes, but if it's a bit windy or there's, it's a busy transition, you sometimes can knock that off. So a lot of people have tri bars that makes it a lot easier. It's a lot more secure. So you put it there and um, I often just put it on my shoes. So I'll, same same thing really it's like that nice and open I've got the straps exactly how I want them so I usually just have it like that so I know I'm coming in I pick up my helmet and on again I just run through it once or twice just to make sure that I know what I'm doing there's no you know you have not over tightened the straps or anything by accident and I know that it's good to go and again nice and simple put that there and then sunglasses anything like that just put those there so you know that you come to it, everything's in order. You're going to take your wetsuit off, you're going to put your sunglasses on, helmet on, and that's it. Race belt. Some races you need them, some races you don't. If it's a wetsuit swim and you're comfortable, wear it underneath your wetsuit. It's the simplest thing. Put it on before you put your wetsuit on, it's fine. You don't need to worry about it again. If you're not happy doing that and you want it in transition, again, think of it like anything else. Nice and simple. 
The best way to do it, I always do, is put it on the helmet so I'm not going to miss it. And I'm going to run into transition. All I'm going to do is already buckled up. I'm just going to step through it like that. And then I go on to my, my glasses and everything else. If you start messing around with the buckle, chances are you'll miss it the first two or three times and waste loads of time. Just step through it, you're dead easy and you're away. And that's basically it for my transition, keeping everything nice and simple. What we're going to do now is we're going to invite Jo in and she's going to talk us through um, more of a, a relaxed style of setup for a transition. So anyone doing long distance racing or novice races, anything like that, where we're looking at comfort, not so much speed, but just doing it right. Well, I've entered transition. I've had a good look around, found my spot amongst all the other hundreds of athletes here and orientated myself. Might have found a, a marker so I know roughly where my spot is in transition. Now I'm going to talk you through um, how to set up your transition if you're maybe new to the sport or it might be that it's a longer distance event where the transition time is less important than good organisation to set you off on your long ride. So here the key is getting a routine, being organised, you don't need to rush this one. So first of all, you've got, you've got your bike in, you've, you've chosen a nice low gearing because you, know, you want an easy start to the day on the bike. So get yourself in a nice low gear, you can change gear once you're, once you're on the road. So set your bike in, you've got your, your tool bag and your bottles that you're going to want. Now I always like to check my tyres, just make sure Pressure's nice and good, just to make sure it hasn't got a puncture on the way in across the grass. Now, I'd also like to make sure my bicycle computer's working, because this, is, this will give you useful information during the race. You don't want to be fiddling about with it when you're out there on the bike course. So once my bike's in place, next thing to do is um, maybe lay yourself out the towel, because you only come in from the swim, your feet will be wet, on your towel, you put your bike shoes. You might want to have these, these opened up ready, so again, you're not, you're not fiddling around with straps. You'll be a little bit tired and frantic, so the less you have to worry about, the more that's laid out simple, the better. If you're gonna to want to put socks on for your bike ride, again, lay your socks out just next to your shoes like this. And some people like to put talcum powder inside their socks and shoes. It helps you get your feet into them when you're wet. Your helmet's here. Now, I've got tri bars. This gives you a very convenient resting place for your helmet. You have the straps just open like this, so that simply all you need to do is pick it up, plonk it on your bonks, do it up and you're ready to go. They won't let you out with this not done up, so you make sure you get this done. You don't want to be fiddling around with cold hands. Inside the helmet, you put your sunnies, if it's going to be a nice day, I hope it is for you. Sunnies in there. Race belt, very important. Again, they won't let you go out without this race belt on. If you haven't worn it during the swim, I don't, then this goes in your, helm your helmet like this, or you could put it down on the floor by your shoes, somewhere where you know you won't forget to pick it up and clip it on. Now remember, after you've done your bike ride, you're gonna be coming back here, throwing all of this on the floor in a hurry, but you want your, your run gear ready to go. So same, same as a bike, you, you put out your run shoes, you get them, I use elastic laces, it enables you to slip them on and off quickly. So you have your run shoes there, laid out, ready for you to come in and put your little feet into them. Now, by the time I've done my swim and my bike, I normally want a little bit of energy. So I, I put a, a gel packet and just stick it inside my shoe. And again, it's just a little reminder, oh yeah, have something to eat. And I'll do that in transition chances are you'll actually have a sit down in transition if you like me you get your wetsuit off and, and it's easy to do it on your bum so you'll actually be down here and this is your little area and you want everything just laid out within reach laid out so to remind you socks shoes number belt glasses helmet and then you're ready to take your bike and off you go there are two transitions in a triathlon and you'll often hear people refer to them as T1 and T2. T1 is when you go from the swim to the bike and T2 from the bike to the run. So now I'm going to hand you over to Mark Jenkins, the 2004 Olympian, to talk you through how you can do the best T1 possible. So here we are with Steve. He's running out of the water in his wetsuit. While he's running, he's then doing the zip on his wetsuit and folding it down as far as he can. When he gets to his transition spot, he takes the rest of it off 
uh, use his hands to get it over his heels if necessary. Straight on with the number belt, straight on with the glasses and then helmet. And while he's doing each thing, he's moving on to the next phase. Then he's running off with his bike and jumps straight on the bike with his cycling shoes already attached. And then he's straight into his cycling motion and he'll put his shoes on. Here's Joe. She's running out of the water also, taking her wetsuit off, folding it down halfway. Then off with the rest of it once she's reached her transition spot. She'll use her hands to get it over the heels if it doesn't quite slip off but sometimes they'll slip right off and you won't need your hands to take them all the way down. Off with a hat and goggles, on with a number belt, on with the socks. If you can put a bit of talcum powder in them, they'll help them slip on a bit better. Uh, she's got her gel there ready in case she needs it. On with the bike shoes. On with the sunglasses and then the safety bit, the helmet. And off Joe goes with her bike. She doesn't jump on it like Steve does and if you're not happy to do that, then just take your time, cock your leg over and get your feet into the cleats. Once you've hopped on your bike, pick your speed up by getting up to as high a cadence as you possibly can. Once you're up to speed, then start using the gears. So that was T1. Now let's take a look at T2, the bike to the run. Here comes Reese. he's heading into T2. He's stretching out his back and his calves while he's still on his bike. This will help him get into his running a bit sooner. He dismounts his bike with his shoes attached to the bike still. This means one less job in the transition area. Straight off with the helmet, on with the running shoes, which have also got a bit of talcum powder in them. Straight off, as simple as that. Here comes Jo. She leaves her shoes on her feet. It's a bit safer to do that if you're not comfortable taking them off while riding. She racks her bike. Make sure it's on the rack properly so it doesn't fall off. You'll get a time penalty if it does fall off. Helmet off. Bike shoes off. She's got a gel in her shoe so she remembers to take it. Straight on with the running shoes. Again with a bit of talcum powder in. And she's off and running. So that's everything you need to know to do great transitions on race day. The best thing you can do though is get there early, get set up, be prepared, and that lets you be calm. Know where you're coming in for T1, where you're going out at T2, and you'll have a great day.